uranium, element 92 in the periodic table, and the fuel that provides 10% of the world's electricity. Used in nuclear reactors, certain naval ships, submarines and medicines, its movement and security of supply is of high geopolitical importance. Without uranium, nations like France and Slovakia, who rely on nuclear power for over 50% of their electricity needs, would be in chaos. Whilst more generally, we would see a resurgence of coal-powered plants as the only alternative to provide this baseload electricity quickly. In 2021, the world mined 48,000 tonnes of uranium, yet total demand was just over 60,000 tonnes, with the difference coming from secondary supplies. But with these secondary sources purportedly running low, the Ukrainian invasion posing significant supply chain issues and demand for uranium expected to increase dramatically with the likes of China aiming to build a new nuclear reactor every year for the next 30 years. The logistics behind the supply of uranium will have to change and change fast over the next decade. And if you want to see more content on energy, history and our world, subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon to be alerted to future uploads. Uranium as a metal is abundant, approximately 500 times more abundant than gold and found in many hotspots around the world. According to the Nuclear Energy Agency's 2022 Uranium Resources Review, there are sufficient uranium resources for the continued use and growth of nuclear energy for more than 130 years. But the metal is not in abundance on the market, with several stages of the uranium fuel cycle each posing their own challenges in our current global environment. In theory, the process of getting uranium out of the ground is simple. You can either directly mine the uranium ore, or dissolve and pump it to the surface as is the case with in-situ leaching. Both of these methods ultimately produce yellow cake. Sounds delicious, but you wouldn't want to eat it, as yellow cake is a powdered form of uranium oxide or U308 which is then made more concentrated during the milling and purification process as the uranium is separated from other minerals present. But in reality, this process isn't happening. At least not on a scale needed to satisfy current and growing future demand. Supply gaps in the uranium market have traditionally been filled by secondary supplies of uranium. This is uranium that was previously produced but has been used in other applications or been in storage. The Megatons to Megawatts program was a large source of the secondary supply. This program consisted of post-Soviet Russia selling down-blended uranium from their dismantled nuclear warheads to the US for usage in their nuclear reactors. This program supplied nearly 15,000 tonnes of uranium to the US, but ended in 2013 as the 20-year agreement came to an end. Other sources of secondary supply, such as Japanese utilities selling some of their uranium after the Fukushima disaster, are coming to an end, which is why many experts in the space believe that these secondary sources of supply are drying up. Although the sources of the secondary supply are notoriously opaque, the slow increase of uranium prices over the past few years may suggest that this is true. This takes us back to the current lack of uranium production. If certain supply gaps exist, why is more uranium not being mined? For a start, many countries ban the mining of uranium for environmental reasons, whilst others have deposits that are too small to be economically viable to extract. This has led to uranium mining becoming very concentrated, where four countries mine around 75% of total annual production. Kazakhstan, Australia, Namibia and Canada. But even in these countries, the process of production is slow moving, with the average mine taking between 10 to 15 years from discovery of a deposit to actual production. But as with any commodity, the price of uranium is fundamentally the reason why uranium production does not meet demand. When the Nuclear Energy Agency concluded that we have enough uranium in the ground to meet demand for the next 130 years, they also mentioned one crucial point, this uranium can be extracted from the ground for less than $100 per pound. But the price of uranium isn't $100 per pound, it's $50, meaning that far less of this uranium is economically viable to extract. In fact, the agency concluded 
that at prices of $30 per pound, only 25% of these uranium resources are economically recoverable. After the Fukushima disaster, the price of uranium fell to $18 a pound, meaning that most uranium in the world was not economically viable to produce. That's why production in some of the largest existing mines like the MacArthur River and Key Lake mines in northern Canada were put on hold, whilst very few new mines entered production due to these low prices. With uranium demand expected to nearly double to 108 tonnes by 2040, existing mines will have to ramp up significantly and new mines must be put into production. But the real question lies in how quickly this can be done. With little investment over the past few years, whilst the resources do exist, how quickly can they be produced? Failure to do so will have significant consequences for the uranium and energy markets in general. Once you have this yellow cake, less than 1% of the U308 can undergo nuclear fission, which is the process that produces energy in a nuclear reactor. The yellow cake must therefore go through additional processing stages for a certain percentage to reach this fissile form. The first stage involves converting the yellow cake into a gas, which is fed into cylinders where it eventually solidifies and is shipped to an enrichment facility. From here, the uranium gas is spun in centrifuges where the lighter and more fissile U-235 isotope is collected. Once a uranium mixture is enriched to 3-5% U-235 concentration, it's then converted into a powdered form of uranium dioxide and ready for the final stage of preparation. Like the uranium mining and milling infrastructure, conversion and enrichment plants are also concentrated in a select few countries. Russia isn't a big player in global uranium production, but they do currently provide 40% of global enrichment capacity, with China ranking in second place. After the invasion of Ukraine, it wasn't uranium production that utilities immediately worried about, but enrichment capacity bottlenecks. This period saw a scramble for enrichment contracts with non-Russian sources contributing to a steep rise in enrichment prices. According to Kamiko, a vertically integrated Canadian producer of uranium who also provide conversion and enrichment facilities, enrichment pricing increased by 169% from the beginning of 2020 to now. The role of enrichment in the nuclear fuel supply chain is critical. And with there being a somewhat fixed capacity for these services globally, enrichment can be seen as a bottleneck in the overall process. This is part of the reason why whilst most Russian industries have seen sanctions by the West, Russia's state-owned enrichment company Rosatom has remained relatively unscathed. This is unsurprising when we see that the company provided 14% of the United States nuclear fuel in 2021, and even more so to European utilities. But these lack of sanctions could change in the near future with US Senators and the European Union currently discussing the introduction of such sanctions. With five members of the G7 recently announcing an agreement to collaborate and ensure a safe and secure supply of nuclear fuel to meet their current and future demands, this signifies an attempt to reduce Russia's dominant role in the nuclear fuel supply chain. Whilst we are yet to see further details on what this agreement might consist of, it does signify the potential use of sanctions on Russia's nuclear energy industry in the near future. The final stage of the uranium fuel cycle is the process of packaging the uranium dioxide in a structure that can be used in nuclear power stations. Usually the powdered uranium is pressed and heated into pellets which are encased in metal tubes to form fuel rods, ready for use in a reactor. As there are many different types of nuclear reactors, the assembly of the fuel rod must be made to match the dimensions and physical characteristics of each specific reactor. But unlike other aspects of the nuclear supply chain, the supply of fuel fabrication services exceeds demand, making this an unlikely future bottleneck. Whilst fuel fabrication services don't pose a significant immediate threat to the uranium supply chain, the movement of uranium around the globe is changing. The world's largest producer of uranium, Kazatomprom, based in Kazakhstan, 
has had to distance themselves from their northern neighbours following the imposition of sanctions against Russia. This meant that Kazatomprom were not able to use their usual shipment routes via St Petersburg and now use a middle corridor via the Caspian Sea. But this middle corridor is more prone to bottlenecks associated with infrastructure constraints in Azerbaijan and Georgia, resulting in shipments facing significant delays. In a geopolitically tranquil world, with a lacklustre focus on nuclear power, the movement of uranium through current supply chains have functioned. But this business as usual approach, with its low production and concentrated nature of uranium producers and enrichers, will have to change to support a changing market. Investment like the EU's pledge to invest up to 300 billion euros into secure energy and transport routes and sectors around the world is more of what is needed to ensure supply chains are robust enough to meet these challenges. The importance of uranium is becoming ever more appreciated globally, with more leaders using nuclear power in their common lexicon. But whether this translates into investment ensuring a stable and secure supply of uranium is yet to be seen. Thank you for watching Olive Stripe Productions. If you enjoyed this video and want to see future videos on a wide range of exciting topics covering energy, history and our world, subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon to be notified of future videos.